destroy this match assets. Okay? And if you want to get some uh, information about your servlet, when you use this method, get servlet info method we use to get the information about the servlet. This get servlet config method is going to be called when you deploy your project in the container or server. After developing of our project, we had to deploy our project in the server or we call container. This Tomcat container or WebLogic, WebLogic server we call what? Container. This servlet config method is going to be called when you deploy your project in the container okay, or the server. So we'll see first, we'll see up to this one, we'll get on servlet and we'll see how to test the servlet. Okay? So this project also generally for Java web applications, MyEclipse is a preferred ID for developing Java web applications. Even Eclipse is also one of the best ID for developing Java web applications. So if you want to create a Java web application, if you want to create, select file option here. In file, select new, select other. So in, in our last class, we selected Java project. So that is for normal core Java applications. If you want to develop a web applications, if you want to develop, select dynamic web project here. Select what? Dynamic web project. So here you will get. Otherwise, type here dynamic web project. In the web, you will get what? Dynamic web project. Create a dynamic web project. Next. So specify the project name. Specify the project name. Let us take my project name is Hello World. What is the project name? Hello World is our web project name. So we had to specify. We specified the project name we specified. Next we had to specify what is the target runtime. What is the next one? Target runtime. I told you right, Java double E is a specification. So we have some implementations for this specification. One of the implementation is what? Tomcat or WebLogic, WebSphere, all these are the implementations for this Java W specification. You had to specify any one of the target runtime or one of the implementation for this Java W. Okay. So here uh, you had to select, definitely you had to install any one of the server hosts. Either it may be Tomcat or WebLogic or WebSphere or JBoss. There are different servers are there. One of the open source is what? Tomcat, generally free of cost you can get. So generally maximum the people use Tomcat only. You have to specify in your machine where this Tomcat server is available. Okay. So you have to specify here new new runtime. For, for this project I am specifying the server. Where I want to deploy this project. New runtime. So in this runtime you get different servers here. Let us take Apache. Apache is having different servers. Next, IBM is having IBM WebSphere, JBoss. Next, Orkey is also having one server. Okay, so different servers are there. Generally, we use what maximum Apache servers we use. So in your device, or uh, in my device, in my device, I configured Tomcat 7.0. I installed Tomcat 7.0. I installed. I hope everyone knows how to install the Tomcat, right? So in my device already installed Tomcat, just you had to specify in your machine where this Tomcat is available. Just you had to specify that one here. Tomcat 7.0, next. In my device it is available, so let's browse option. Just you had to specify the location in your device where the Tomcat server is available. My computer, the C drive is available, Tomcat 7.0. You had to specify the location of Tomcat 7.0. Select which. So we specified what? We specified the target runtime we specified. Meaning after completion of your project, it will deploy the project in the Tomcat server. Okay. Next. Select next. classes are going to generate in each folder. Let's start to see folder. Next. 
generate web.xml. Don't forget this one. If you don't generate this web.xml file, you cannot deploy your servlet project in the server. Okay, definitely we need what? Web.xml file. This web.xml file is also one of the deployment descriptors. See, it is giving generate web.xml deployment descriptor. Generate what? Web.xml deployment descriptor. Okay. So have you remembered when you are discussing about XML, we discussed one of the feature of XML is what? XML is used as what? The deployment descriptors. What is in a deployment descriptor? What is in a deployment descriptor? Your web web.xml, android manifesto.xml file, web-config.xml in case of .NET. In PHP also will you write any XML file, .xml file. Okay. So here, this web.xml is deployment descriptor in the sense, we are developing one web application we are developing. By using which language we are developing this web application? Java, right? By using Java we are developing this web application. But internally, we are deploying this web application in the server, right? Tomcat server. By using which language the Tomcat server is developed? By using which technology the, the Tomcat is developed? C and C++, right? So if you if you give your Java code to C and C++ system, nothing it will understand. Correct or not? We have to give an understandable format to the Tomcat server. So that understandable format is nothing but XML. So this web.xml file gives a description about our web application to the server. Web.xml file gives a description about our web application to the server. Okay. So that is deployment descriptor. Select finish. What is the first step? Create a class which implements what? Implements implements solid interface. Implements C 
to be showing error. So you had to provide the input. These are all the methods. On test run. Next. Get solid config, get solid info, init method, and the service method. To say frankly, here we use only service method we use. Which method we use? Only service method we use. I'm writing here, just only will do one thing. We'll write, we'll write SOP statements with like system.out.printer. Let us take from, from service method. From service method. This is from init method. Next. This is from solid info method. Next. This is from solid config method. And the best method. SOP statements will return. Next step is if you create any servlet, if you create any servlet, if you create each and every servlet class, we had to configure in the web.xml file. If you create any servlet class, what we had to do? If you create any servlet class, if you create, we had to configure that servlet class in the web.xml file. Okay? So here, get other things. So remove all the things. So this web, web app by web app is a root tag. I hope you can tell what is this XML NS is equal to XSI. That is what? XML schema, right? So here, if you, in servlet, if you create any servlet class, each and every servlet class you have to configure in the web.xml. So here, each and every solid class we had to configure with solid by solid tag. Each and every solid had to configure what? Solid by solid, solid tag. We had to specify what is the solid name and what is the solid class. We had to specify what is the solid name and what is the solid class. So give any name for the solid. For example, this is a name I given and specify what is the solid class name? The class name is my my solid dot class. Is it mandatory or what is the class name? The class name is what? My solid. Next. Solid mapping. You had to specify what is the solid name. You had to give the same name. What are the name you specified in the solid? You had to specify the same name you had to specify. And next, you had to specify what? The URL pattern you had to specify. Slash, for example, meaning the URL from slash mys, the URL from mys is going to call, it is going to call this solid class. What is the class? My servlet class will invoke. Which class will invoke? My servlet class will invoke. Okay. Shall we test? We already configured the server, we already configured. So directly, here yeah, directly we install the application in the server. I'll show you. We configured in the web.xml file. This web.xml file will be the to the Tomcat Center. If you want to deploy this application, select the project, other words, right click on the project, select run as, run on server. Tomcat server, select, select. So automatically it will start the server and it will deploy the application in the server. In 
the bottom console you find something else. What is the port number? My device, my Tom cash other port number is double line, double line. What is the port number? Double line, double line is a port number. So how to access this one? You can run server we created, right? Correct or not? How to access that server? HTTP colon. Local post. Colon. Double line, double line. What is the project name? Hello world is the project name is specified. Slash. If you specify which URL, you will get the solid class in invoke. What is the URL you had to specify? MYS you had to specify. In this hello world, if you give MYS, which one is for? See in the console it is given from init method and from service method. From init method and from service method, meaning how many methods are called? Mm -hmm. Two methods are called. Eight method is called as well as service method is also called. For example, you got a request. Once again, second time also you made, you made a request. Which method is called? Only service, service method. Okay. First time when you make a request for this solid, at that time only it is going to call any method. From second time onwards, do not invoke the any method. We invoke only the service method will invoke. So can we access this application from other systems? What is the difference between your, your Java SC and Java double E? Java SC in a sense only within that system, right? Only within that system we can execute that application. But the web application we can access anywhere in the world. So if you want to see here, you are having Wi-Fi connection, right? I will tell you one network. Just connect to that network. You will get a network called Connectify Me. In your Wi Fi, scan the devices. You will get a network called what? Connectify Me. Don't try everyone. Okay. Try only 10 or 5 members. Just ask awesome. them. Mahesh Lavan. Mahesh Lavan is a password. Connect to this network. So two devices are connected. Who are connected? Connected by means. Any kind of dial. Right hand. But only two devices are connected.
On the screen, nothing you will get, but here it is going to call the service method. Someone is making a request or not? Okay. So, meaning, what is the difference between your core Java and the Java W? From some other applications also, from other systems also, you can access this one. Are you installing any separate software to access my this application? No, right. So, actually, this is within the Wi Fi range. Now my laptop is a server boss. All your systems are the boss. So my application is relaxing because of you both, we both are in a same net network. So globally if you want to provide this service, what do you do? If you have an internet, if you have internet connection, the world wide you can access anywhere. Correct or not? Stop it boss, someone is continuous pressing enter. Okay. So this is our first application, a hello world application we created. So now when you make a request on the browser, nothing you are getting on the browser, right? Correct or not? Are you getting on the browser? No. So if you want to, every time when you make a, every time when you make a request, which method is calling here? Which method is calling? Service method is calling. This service method is taking how many parameters as input? Two parameters as input. One is servlet request, another one is servlet response. So let's discuss what is the servlet request and what is the servlet response object. So here, if you write system.out.println, where it is printing? In console, not in the browser. In console it is printing, right? I don't want to print on console. I want to print on the browser. I want to print on the browser. I want to print the data. So if you want to print the data on the browser, we had to create an object for print writer. We had to create an object for what? Print writer. Print writer. Oh. Still someone is calling us. So print writer. Writer is equal to the response object contains so one of the input parameter for this one of the input parameter for this service method what is the first parameter solid request right actually we are got here r0 and r1 we will change the names for our union request and the response the response object contains the response object contains a method called get writer is a method. This return you which object? Print writer, object it will return. So right here, writer dot writer dot what is a method? Print ln is a method. In this print ln method, I am printing a message, welcome to AP SSS. So now if you make a request from your browser, what is the output you will get? Welcome to AP SSS. Previously we written system.out.println, which it will print the data in a console. Where in my console, in my system console it will print the values, nothing you will get in your systems. But now when you make a request to this URL, you will get a message. What is the message you will get? Welcome to AP SSDC you will get. Okay. So if you want to test, it will redeploy. Every time when you make some changes, automatically it will deploy. Because I am using some, from from 7.0 onwards, if you make any changes in the servlet, automatically it will deploy. Automatically it will deploy. Because we are using some IDs, ID, right? ID will take care of deploying, redeploying for every new change. But manually if you are doing, you will not redeploy. After, after completion of modification, applications, every time we have to deploy our application in the dev. If you want to redeploy once again, select the project, hello world, run as, run as server. 
So now the next one is, I want to give a message, I will pass some input parameters. Let us say in place of this AP SSDC, for example if I pass Mahesh, I want to display a message, welcome to Mahesh. If you give Harish, I want to print a message is what? Welcome to? So how to pass any input parameters for this one? I want to give some data. I want to give some data to this one, to this servlet. How to give the data to this servlet? How to give the data to the servlet? So here, we can pass some parameters. We can pass some parameters we can pass to the so let's, if you want to give some data, you can give the data as a parameters. But what we had to do is, for the parameter, we had to give one name we had to give. For the parameter, what you had to give? We had to give a name we had to give for, a, for the parameter. So here, I'll do one. If you want to get the parameters, in the request object, we have a method called get parameters. Get parameter is a method. Request dot get parameter. Let us take I am giving the parameter name as name. Meaning user is going to give some value with the key. What is the key? Name is a key. He is going to give a value. But oh. 
What is the key here? So in your server, right, if you want to specify, you get on string user. String name is equal to request dot get parameter up. So here, in place of this welcome to APSSDC, in place of this APSSDC, I am writing here welcome to plus what are the input parameters you given? Welcome to don't test, it's not complete. Welcome to Welcome to the will read the application. Run on server. We have to pass some parameters, right? We have to pass a parameter or not? What is the name we given the parameter? If you want to pass the parameters, if you want to pass, after this solid URL, you have to give question mark. Question mark and what is the key we given? Name. Name, name is equals to, let us take, I am giving Mahesh. Name is the key and what is the value here? Mahesh is the value. Just give enter. Welcome to Mahesh. In your systems, whatever the value you will pass, you will get your value. Welcome to Harish. So, welcome to. For example, you are the technical person, I, I am also the technical person. Okay, you will understand. Okay, you have to pass some query parameters, you have to pass so that the servlet will take the data and it will print the data. For example, if you want to give to this service to a normal person first. If you want to give this service to a normal person, he cannot he cannot know how to type this URL and everything, right? Correct or not? So what we had to give to a normal user? We had to give some user interface controls. Enter your name and one text box. The user is going to give some name. And after that, click submit button. Correct or not? Then how to provide this user interface to the user? How to provide this user interface to the user? By using HTML. So here also, for these Java applications also, the front end is what? HTML. If you want to provide some user UI controls, if you want to present some user interface, the front end, user in, the front end is what? HTML. The HTML is going to interact with the source web. Okay. So we'll see how to how to design one form, on HTML form, and how to communicate with the server. Okay. So here, if you want to create a HTML, if you want to create in your project, you got web, com, web, web content, right? Web content. In this web content, create one HTML file. Select this web content folder. Select this web content folder. Create one HTML. Select new. Create one. Let us take my HTML file name is test.html. What is the HTML file name? Test.html is a file name. You are HTML experts, right? Correct or not? So just I need this, uh, just enter some text and on edit box and on button box. Okay. This is a user interface I need. Directly 
can we create or we need we have to take a form form right form is mandatory for this one okay so we'll take one form we'll do one thing the formula is edit plus sign like yes, for creating html expression Find some background color. What is the next one? We have to take one. How we have to take? Nothing. I am not using any any type of post type of request or get type of request. I take an old form. When user selects this form, specify what is the action. I give an M Y S. When user selects this, when user clicks my form, it is going to call which URL? M Y S. In this form, I need this one. Enter some text, one edit box, and one button. Give a name for this one. Enter some text. Give a name for the text box. What is the name I given? The name I given for the text box. Text. 
give us some text okay and we click submit button welcome to so what are the value you will give in the text box what are the value you give in the text box what are the value here Welcome to. If you want to try, try. How many systems are connected to this? Anyone is trying? Touching our phone. Do you know how we understand? What is the lunch time? Uh, lunch break time? Thank you. 
and web. That was Java. So I use the same classes. I use the same classes to communicate with the database. So create a new project. Okay. So let's say file. Forgot to generate this web dot XML. So I recreate the function. So in this student app, so in this student app, so open this app.
correct or not? So MVC is termed as model view controller, which is used to, to separate the business logic, presentation logic, and the integration. MVC. What is the main theme of MVC? It is used to separate the business logic, presentation logic, and the integration logic. So here, now our presentation logic is separate. The HTML files will create a separate HTML files that is the presentation logic. So next, what is the business logic? We already written the integration logic. We already written that student app module IMPL everything we written. How to communicate in the database? Everything we we already written. So now only we had a logic. Only we had to write only one thing. Model view controller. Model means nothing but the database logic. We already written that one. We already written the so communicating the database logic. Everything we already written. Now we had to write only two things. The view logic. We had to write and the controller. So here controller means nothing but the servlet. The servlet is a controller. View view is nothing but your HTML files. If you separate if you separate the code like this, then that that the concept is called as the MVC design pattern. MVC design pattern. Design pattern means I already explained you one. Once I already illusion for a very common. Problems are common occurring problems. That is design pattern. MVC is one of the design pattern. We have different. In case of Java, we have MVC one and MVC two. MVC one design pattern and MVC two design pattern. By using the servlets or JSP, you can do only MVC one design pattern. You can you can give the solution only for MVC one. We cannot provide the solution for MVC. MVC two, if you want to provide, that is, we have a framework in Java called Struts. What is the framework name? Struts, S T R U T S. By using Struts framework, you can provide MVC2. You can provide a solution for MVC2 design pattern. But here, by using this solution, we can provide only for MVC1. In .NET, we have MVC1, MVC2, MVC3, MVC4, and MVC5. The latest one is MVC5 in .NET. Okay. So if you write the code, or if you separate the code into multiple parts. The best thing is in future. For example, only I want to change the view part. I want to change. Only you can change the view part. The business logic and the integration logic will not change. Integration logic or model logic. The model logic and the controller logic will not change. Only view part is going to be changed. For example, I want logic. Remain. View and we had a read. Let's take my HTML file name. HTML is a file name. Get it. You had to create two forms. Get it. One form. Get it. 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 Get it.
when the user selects a button. Student ID, student name, and okay. this is for inserting the data. And at the end, we will do one thing. So, we have to create one more. We have to take one more table row for button. So automatically, it's going to call the in specify only. In the web.xml file, in the HTML.
this Here, 